back study. There's lots of things you can back test and study that has nothing to do with going into the market and supposedly doing an entry pattern. The entry is the least important thing. In your notes, right now for today, January 10th, 2023, write this out in bold letters. The entry technique is the least important factor in consistently profitable trading. Underline it, highlight it. Every single day that you go into your studies, you open your study up with that. You say that like a motto. That's your mantra. The entry pattern is the least significant factor in consistently profitable trading. It doesn't feel like that would be true, is it? It's Like you all think I got to know how to get in because I got to have a small stop loss. I got to do two pips because everybody on fucking Instagram is doing two pip stop losses and they're getting 200 R, but they're still trading nano fucking lots three years into it. At some point, you got to call bullshit, folks. At some point, there's going to have to be someone that stands up and says, you know, this is a bunch of bullshit. Because if these young men could be doing 200 R trades and using two pip stop losses, Let me tell you something. That's better than me. That's better than me. And they would have been picked up by now. (laughs) Trust me, they would have been picked up and there ain't nothing bullshit about that. There's nobody doing that. Nobody's doing that. But, you know, everybody believes whatever they want to believe. But once you see the real thing, everything else just feels like a waste of time and it's a period of mourning you got to go through because for me i invested a lot of money in books and courses and mentoring through video and vhs tapes and shit and i believed every single one of these individuals were sincere individuals that were telling me the truth and they're all fucking liars they're all liars they're all selling shit because they didn't make money trading Hmm. That's interesting. I was not charging for a long time. Then I did charge because I was pissed off when people were selling my free stuff. And then to prove that I don't have to do that, I stopped selling. And now I'm teaching more, more fever pitched than anybody else out there, whether they're doing it for free or for money, because I love doing this. This is how I did it before. On Baby Pips, every fucking night I was making a video. I was in the forums typing up all kinds of fucking essays. Because I love doing, I have so much in my head, I got to get it out. I have experiences, I have knowledge, I have wisdom. And if I die and I don't share it, I feel like it's wasted. So I'm like a fucking fire hose. How many times am I supposed to stop (laughs) in this discussion? Right. And there's no ad revenue. We're just talking like close friends would. Old high school chums that, hey man, I ain't seen you in a while. What have you been doing yourself? Oh, I've been doing this. You wanna learn how to do it? Oh yeah, show me how to do it. I wish there was a way we could all connect, you know, physically shake hands and say, hey, but there's some, you know, distances that we're not gonna be able to bridge. And we have to do it this way. And it's more efficient this way. And it feels, It feels, for many of you, like one-on-one, like I'm talking to you. When I have my son's and my daughter's face in my mind when I'm talking. And that's why it feels genuine, because I'm saying everything to them in this recording that would be said to them if they were here. Much like that movie with Michael Keaton, My Life, where he knew he had... uh, a terminal illness and he wanted to record all kinds of stuff teaching his son you know because he wouldn't be there you know i i treated my videos like that for my kids not that i'm terminal because i, I mean obviously I'm, i was sick today i thought i was dying <laughs> it sucked but i feel much much better now but uh i wish there was a way for us to have a better experience together I've had folks reach out to me and say, hey, look, you know, I want to do an event with you. Everything's funded by us. 
you know, it would be for profit and we would pay you for your, you know, your engagement. I just don't want to do that. Like, I, I don't want to do that. Because number one, I'm, I'm probably not going to feel good about the experience doing it. Um, two, you know, the only thing I want to sell in the future is the book. That's it. I don't want to do mentorships and I don't want the books to be terribly expensive. I want them to be obtainable for all of you. And I want you to know the things that I want you to know. And you'll have it. You know, it's a like a testimony to everything that I've gone through, what I've learned, what I wish I would have done differently as a mentor and what I've learned as a mentor as well as well as uh, you know real order block theory what what is this thing that is my order block because what you think you know about it isn't it it's just the the initial introduction to it and there's so many things that you don't know about it that a very big very big book will be the only way i can communicate and the wonderful thing is is anybody that hasn't gone through the videos that i've done on youtube and mentorship core content, the book won't work for them either. <laughs> Everything I've ever done has been calculated and planned and intended to make sure the weak don't get it. The lazy, the short cutters, they're not going to get it. But to appease everyone and also to clear my guilty conscience about making it hard for most people. I'm going to do what I'm going to do this year to make sure you see it real, live, right there in front of you. And while there is a small delay, and it may be a little bit bigger of a delay for other people in different parts of the world, between what I say and what's on my chart on the YouTube live stream, and when you see it on your chart, there's a small little delay in that. If we're looking at one minute charts, that might be a major impact between what I'm calling and talking about and before your chart shows it in the relay from whatever I've done and said in the live stream. It's got to travel all around the internet to get to your computer or your device and you're watching and listening to me live. So that delay, you need to be able to compensate for that by having your own real time data with E-mini S&P and E-mini NASDAQ. If you don't have that, that's going to be a disadvantage for you. And I know some of you are trying not to spend money, but if you're trying not to spend money, but you think you're going to make money in trading, you are already setting yourself up for failure. You're going to have to avail yourself certain resources. And unfortunately, data is essential. Like you, you, you can't rely on like Forex. Okay, Forex is free. It's free data. You know, it's great. But if you're trading a market that's highly precise like this, like you could never pull off. And this is why I've never done. And this is why I've always challenged everybody that say they use one pip and two pip stop losses in Forex and they do it every single trade and it never gets stopped out. I said, just show me one month of doing it. <laughs> They've never done it. They've never done that. You can't do those tight stop losses in Forex because the brokers that you're in, they have their own internal house of liquidity and you're in it. And then they reach out and they get you because you're in order. It's going to trade rate to your price. In the futures market, everybody has the same price. See the difference there? Everybody has the same price. So if you're going to be trading in a professional market setting, you want to be in what? That one. And that means you're going to have to pay a little bit of money to get that feed of real-time data and it's such an insignificant amount of money so i know a lot of you are in impoverished nations and you're trying to learn this so you can do better things and, and climb your way out of that and that's commendable and i have students have done that but if i'm not in forex and my attention is in this market you're going to have to adapt knowing that what i'm doing in this one will work for you in forex too i'm just not going to be in forex i'm not going to do that i will tell you my bias when it's there 
I don't have a bias. I didn't share it last night. I just reviewed. Look, we gave you levels and it traded to them and dollar did exactly what we were expecting. And how did I use that information? If the dollar was dropping, that means the S&P can go higher. It's a teeter-totter effect. One up, other one down. Risk on, risk on. There's going to be times and you see us doing live streams and I'll explain how when the dollar is going to be going up and the S&P will be going up too. Well, what do you do with that? I'll explain all that at the time because it's all short-term in nature. And that, that break in the correlation is significant when it's there. Much like an S&P divergence. But talking about it conceptually without having it being right there in front of you, it doesn't have the same impact of saying, now watch this one minute candle right here. It should not go above this candle's high and it's gonna to go to that candle right down there. And you're all watching on the same one minute chart. And then it happens. And then you're gonna be like, what the hell did I just see? And you're gonna think about all that shit you read in books and videos and all the other stuff, these indicator things that's always taking your attention away from that. Because here's the thing. I looked at these charts when I was working, when I was driving, I had chart books next to me. When I got stopped at a red light and I was delivering my, because I used to do vending, I used to do uh, candy machines and soda machines, coffee machines. That was my job when I was learning how to trade. So I was driving around in a Suzu uh, liftgate truck full of candy and sodas and shit, you know, going around servicing machines all around the Baltimore area. I worked for a company out in Owings Mills that doesn't exist anymore. But uh, I had charts with me constantly. And I lived and breathed this shit. Like, I, I couldn't get enough of it. Clearly, clearly, you can tell still at 50 years old, I am still immersed in this. Because it is me. Like, this is me. My wife says it all the time. It's like, this this is you. This is, like, we're small little pieces and extensions and peripherals to your trading. That's, th th we're the small little extras in the, in the play that is ICT. And unfortunately, that sucks as a husband and a dad. But as a trader, it makes me fucking rock hard because I literally, I know what that means because that, that means... I'm in it. I'm all in it. My entire life I've been that way. Since the 5th of November, 1992, on a Thursday night at 9 p.m. In my aunt and uncle's house, reading a book that literally was a roadmap to lose money. But when I lost that money, folks, let me tell you something. That's all it took. That first initial decision. Because I, I sat there and I was afraid to put that first trade on. I was so afraid to go into the futures market. I thought by going into options, that would be safer. Man, was I wrong there? I lost half of my money. Overnight, the first night. Orange juice, that shit. By the way, that fellow that sent me the little thing, orange juice. Uh, I don't have it sitting on my desk, but I do have it. It was, it was cute. The other stuff you sent me. You know who I'm talking about, Mr. Huddleston. <laughs> but uh, this fear that you probably have when you finally get your funded account, that first trade, the easiest thing you can do is put the smallest leverage on and flip a quarter. If it's heads, just buy something. If it's tails, just sell something and get it out of the way. Once you pop that cherry, not to be crude, but you just got to just do it. You just got to let it happen. Whatever the result is, you've done it because you're going to be so afraid of that first trade and you're going to make it more than it really is. And the longer you wait to do that first engagement, the more psychological impact it's going to have when you do take it. So as soon as you get funded or whenever you open up your live account, the very first trading day, flip a quarter. There it is. And that quarter that you flip, keep it at your trading desk. Because you're going to need that quarter again in the future. When you just feel like you need to have something to distract you from wanting to get out of your trade, flip that quarter. Stick to the fucking rules. You have to distract yourself because that's what indicators do. Indicators are going to distract you from price. It's going to distract you from looking at what really is going on. Because if you always are looking at indicators, this is why this shit has never been observed by anybody else. Because... 
they have constantly been bombarding us with what? Something to look at, a red herring. Put these triangles over your chart and we're going to call it harmonic. Ride the Elliott wave. Everything's supply and demand. Like everything else is supply and demand. No, these markets don't work like the fucking grocery store, okay? This is totally different. This is absolutely totally different. In the grocery store, we might be paying a lot more money for things than today, but it's not a ruthless cutthroat business like trading is. There's nothing like this. And when you get involved in it, you're either going to fall in love with it and fall head over heels over it. Even if you're not profitably, you're still going to love it. If you feel that way, I'm going to tell you something. You are destined to do well in this. You have the very thing that's needed. That means the passion and the endearment for this industry. Because if you're a casual, just let me just dabble and see what happens. If I make money, great. If I don't, fuck this shit. I'm out of here. If you lose money and you feel like this is it, this is the worst thing that could ever happen, this decision you made was the worst thing you could have ever done for yourself, the trading is not for you. Because losing on trades or losing an account for a real trader, that doesn't mean shit. That's just a speed bump. Now, I'm not discounting the fear, the regret, the remorse that you're going to feel if you blow your account. That's real. You have to come to terms with that. And you're going to feel that if you have monthly goals. When you first start out, you're going to think you got to figure it out. You're going to go faster, harder than you really should, sooner than you should. And you're going to have that same experience. Every one of us have had regretting pushing too hard, trying to prove something, and you blow out. Let me tell you something. There ain't no shame in doing that. If you blow out, max loss day, blow your account, major drawdown, go into a tailspin. All of that shit is what we do. That's what this industry, that's the common denominator. You're going to lose eventually, but how much are you going to lose? If you push really hard and you try to do Olympic size feats and you blow the account, does that mean you suck as a trader? No, it just means that you were pushing really, really hard and you went beyond the thresholds that your account and your skill set could afford done now that is not how you should be trading every single setup if you're not in a competition then why the fuck are you trying to trade like a competition try to trade profitably be eloquent with your entries precision manage risk impeccably that's hallmarks to a highly skilled professional trader Knowing what they're looking for, engaging it perfectly, managing their stop perfectly, taking partials when it allows it. And if it stops you out and you don't get your target, who gives a shit? You've made money. That's the whole reason why you took the trade, right? I mean, nobody's nobody's in my community saying our targets are the only ones we got to have. Like, When's the last time you watched me do a full pull? I can do them on every single one of my trades. Anything that I execute on, I can do a full pull. A full pull is me no, not taking any partials. But I'm teaching you by example, this is what you want to look for because you're learning. See, you're going to get in trades early, sometimes late. You're going to do this shit wrong. And that's all part of this. It's all normal for you to do that and fail. That's normal. Everybody does this. And you learn from those experiences. You don't learn from making money. You never learn from making money. The only thing that shit does is make you more topped up to do it again, quicker than, than you should. You're going you're to rush back in. And the lesson comes from you not doing what you feel like you need to do when you make money, which is go back in right away because that dopamine hit, it wears off fast. Especially as soon as you take your win to the social media and nobody gives a flying fuck. You're going to feel like, oh, it wasn't big enough. Let me go in there and do more. I got to do I got to do 500 contracts of the E-mini S&P or US 500. 